Is this super heavily peated whiskey going to be too much for a beginner palate like mine and just punch me in the face with a whole bunch of peat? Well, stick around and we're gonna find out. Hello and welcome to Lacorious George. My name is George, and today I'm going to be guiding all of you through my curiosity with Brook Laddie's latest Octomore release, which is Octomore 13.4, and this is the super heavily peated whiskey. For those who aren't familiar with the Octomore release from Brook Laddie, this is their limited release that they put out that they really start to play with all of the different elements that create the flavor profile in a whiskey. So you're going to see them play around with the different cask types, the amount of time that they're aging it different strains of barley that they're using. They even start to look at things like terroir, which you hear much more around the world of wine, but they use this release as kind of their experimentation series. You know, I kind of feel like it's a high school science experiment of sorts, you know, except at the end of this, you're not left with a bad grade and singed eyebrows from the Bunsen burner. You know, don't ask me how that happens. Um, you're left with a whiskey that all of us can enjoy. Well, not everybody, because you know, obviously children, they're not old enough to drink yet. Moving on. So as I mentioned, this is release 13.4. Give you a look there. The 13 series, there were four releases. Each one of them was aged five years total. And so the only difference between all four of them was how it was matured. So let's take a look at the particulars of this bottle. Uh, so release 13.4, it's coming in at a whopping 61.6%. Um, so it's gonna be pretty hot. You know, the peat level, which is measured in parts per million, it's coming in at 137.3. So for a little perspective of that, most Scotch whiskeys are going to come in anywhere, I don't know, under 50 parts per million. You know, maybe 60, 70, depending on which one it is. This is 137.3. So when it says super heavily peated, uh, they're not joking. Super heavily peated. So next thing, taking a look at it. So as I mentioned, all the releases in this series were aged for five years. Uh, this particular one was aged originally in First Fell ex-American whiskey casks for six months before being transferred into virgin American oak casks that had a high toast level. So enough about the particulars on the bottle, let's get into the bottle itself and see if a beginner palate like mine can taste anything other than a whole bunch of peat out of this. Love that sound. Okay, so I'm gonna do it straight up neat first. Um, no sort of water, see what it looks like. So first thing I'm noticing here, I'm looking at the color, giving it a spin and seeing the down the glass. So it's a pretty nice color, a little golden brown there. Not too, too dark, but it is for a five-year-old. Got some good color there. Uh, Brook Laddie is one of the distilleries that they don't use any chill filtration or artificial color. So you know that this is the original color uh, coming right out of the barrel. So very nice look on it. And if you give it a spin and watch the legs coming down as well you see it holds on to the sides pretty well too so um got a pretty oily appearance to it and i don't know about you but i can actually sit here and stare at the legs for a while i just like to watch them run down the glass yeah okay we don't need to watch that so now let's stick my nose in here and see what i can get Whew. okay that's some peat now depending on how much you drink scotch whiskey especially a peated whiskey Peat smoke has a very distinct smell to it, and this definitely has that peat smoke to it. But really, considering how heavily peated this is, uh, it's not as forward as I thought it would be, because I can still get some of those woody notes underneath it, for sure. You can tell it was from a toasted barrel, because you can kind of get like that toasted wood smell in there. But like I said, it's, it's very interesting that with something so heavily peated that you actually get more than just the peat smoke out of it. You can definitely get the 61% though. You get your nose a little too close to that. Whew. Yeah, aside from the peat, once it subsides a little bit more, you definitely get the toasted wood notes and even a little sweetness to it. So it's really interesting actually. There's a lot that I can smell in here. I just can't put a finger on it. Probably because I haven't smelled that many whiskeys, to be honest. I actually really like this nose. So I actually discovered that I do like peated whiskey. I had no idea. I didn't think I did. But then I tried a few peated whiskeys and realized, hmm, you know what? That's not bad. And after coming back to it a few times, like I said, you go past the peat and you get a little bit of the sweetness in there too. 
All right, so quick break in the action to say that if you're liking the video so far, go ahead and hit that like button. It gives me the feedback to know that you guys are liking what I'm putting out so far and lets me know in the future what direction I should be taking these videos in one way or the other. Also, consider hitting that subscribe button. That way you're staying up to date with the latest videos I'm putting out and you're not missing any content in the future. All right, let's give it a little swirl and see what it does on the palette. Wow. Okay. So that's definitely hot. You're tasting all of that 61 to 0.6%. So that's a little hot for my palate. Yeah. So if you're not used to drinking this high ABV, I would definitely take it slow on this one. But the first thing I taste now that I've had it is you get some of that peat smoke. But again, I don't feel like the peat smoke's the only thing I get out of there. You definitely still get some of the toasted, some of that toasted flavor. A little more of the maltiness that you would expect out of the scotch whiskey. Okay, the next couple of sips aren't quite as hot once your palate gets used to that initial one. After swirling it around a bit in my mouth, you get a little bit more of the sweetness. So I think definitely like a, like a honey comes out on that, as well as some of those woody notes again. You, know, you can definitely tell it was aged in oak because it kind of tastes like a sweet piece of wood. You know, I don't know why I expected it to be a little spicier on the palate, but it's actually not that spicy at all. You know, I don't really taste a whole lot of, you know, baking spices and things that you would expect to usually taste. Yeah, it's interesting. After a few tastes on this, the smoke really starts to blend with the other flavors. So you got the sweetness still, but I'm almost getting a fruitiness. I'd say like a citrusy note. I don't know if it's like a lemon citrusy, maybe an orangey type of a citrus, but some sort of a citrus that isn't super, super acidic. Yeah, you know, once you get past the heat of the first initial sip, this is actually really enjoyable and it's actually much easier to take on than I originally thought it was going to be after that first sip. So from a finish perspective, it sticks around for a little bit in your mouth. And definitely the peat smoke comes back through, um, but there's still some fruitiness that lingers around there. There's almost like a saltiness in my mouth. I'm not saying that I necessarily taste salt, but if you know you've eaten something salty and you kind of feel like the sides of your mouth salivating a little bit, it kind of leaves you, your mouth a little bit like that. And like I said, I don't necessarily taste something salty, although there is a little bit to it, I guess. But my mouth definitely feels like I just had something salty. So I'm going to add a few drops of water to this. Drop a few in there. Give it a little swirl. Now, after the water... The smoke is toned down a little bit on the nose. Man, there's a lot more citrus now than there was before when I added this couple bits of water. Actually, I think the nose is blended a lot more now too. The sweet and the citrusy with the peat smoke. Oh man, that's nice. All right, let's see how it changed the palate on me. All right, so the couple drops of water there definitely makes it a little bit more manageable for me. And I definitely think the sweetness there is a honey coming through. Also, I'm starting to get a little bit more of like a toasted maltiness to it. So like some cereals, but like toast it up a little bit. I will say too, this is the second time I've actually poured myself a glass of this and tried it. I'm getting a lot more this time around than I did the first time when I tried it. I think the, you know, 61% alcohol was just a little too much for me. Overwhelmed everything at first. But now that I've gone and tasted it a second time, add a little bit of water here, tames it down a bit. I'm definitely getting a lot more flavor through here. I could definitely tell too, there's a lot of complexity with the nose and the taste on this one, but I just don't think I can pull it all out. Maybe someone who's a little more experienced could taste this and pull out a lot more of the tasting notes. Again, I haven't tasted enough whiskey to be able to tell all those things that most people write about. But what I can say is that I think it's a damn good pour. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this glass off. Maybe pour myself another one. Yeah, maybe two. Depends on whether or not I want to get up out of this seat later. But until next time, stay curious, everyone, and cheers.